Hi, people who follow this podcast, and today I'm going to read, I think, three or four poems, and that's all I'm going to do for you today. Um, I have a new book, well, a new chapbook, as the my notes hit the floor, um, coming out from uh, Mysterio Books probably this year, and I'm going to read some from that soon, um, but I'm going to read from my first book, Apocalyptics, which will show up backwards, um, from Unlikely Books first. And this came out two years ago. I wrote it over a period of about 15 years. Poem, Aesthetic Theory. A philosopher once said, Beauty is a promise of happiness, true or false. The phrasing like a poorly written test question, but dangling modifiers all the more profound. So if this is the case, what beauty is in the lingering of maggots in the ceiling while ballet students dine in a movie where murders are enacted with the director's hands? Does the shadow contrast with the promise? Do truth and beauty dangle each other from the rafters, each lovingly tying the knot of kiku? Until bound and struggling for balance or release, my friend reminds me how the camera cuts away at the moment of death. The jarring of an eye in shock, voyeur to the promise. But it is a friend who tells me this, all in all, far beyond my hearing, and I realize that perhaps the lingering of the conversation is a promise kept. Then I'm going to read another poem from my first collection. Um, this poem actually run me an, an intro awards nomination. And it's called Making Love to the Sounds of Televised War. I wrote it in 2005. A time is coming when all men will go mad. And when they see someone who is not mad, they will attack him, saying, You are not mad. You are mad. You are not like us. St. Anthony the Great. Feels like loss, like losing blood mixed with storm water. My body contorts like a tightened rope. Her pubis rubs my chest as my throat freezes like a tundra choked in heath, dressed in palmer frost, or like a desert of St. Anthony under the caresses of the sun, whose touch aged his face like smoke camel hide. In my chest, I feel St. Anthony's door being opened inviting demons that would pick his tan flesh, arranging each assault with an arsenal available in such heat. Anthony lay, half-encrusted in sand, spent, in the mumble of a dead anchorite. A missile hits a Baghdad hotel. The apocalypse, afterglow, revealing, reveling, the hum of a helicopter lost. And what makes that poem kind of ironic is I actually finished this book, um in Cairo, and I went to some of the areas where St. Anthony, who was one of the Desert Fathers, was at about 10 years after I wrote that poem. Um, now I'm going to read some from the new collection coming out from Mysterio Books. That, and it's not available yet, um, but it will be soon. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a maxi chat book. Um, it's longer than most chat books, but it's shorter than a full collection. It's about 41 pages. And it's called, the, the collection will be called Liberation and All the Other Bread, etc. I'm going to read just one poem, but it's long. It's broken up in several sections. It's called The Mirrors. Love is the extremely difficult realization that something other than oneself is real. Love and so art and morals is the discovery of reality. Iris Murdoch. Rarely through our own eyes, we see ourselves or others. The deepening smoke of eyes aim forward through space, through time, touch the instances of the present, fleshing future, pulling another into us until the spine will almost release and for a second merge too close, too close. Heat, white bubbles. The edge, instead of softening, Vaseline lenses.
Section 2. You cut through the lines of love, through the trickets of light, words fail, even ancient crumbling valium, bodies metastasize, skin pigments fade and splotch, scars knit the angels into secretions, blistering the past, adhesions upon the present, wake you in tiny rips, good morning, sir, you have ublicated the gears of bodies, unbuilt touch into specters and sand eddies, you won't return when you sleep, close your eyes and see. Even gifted hens don't write sight our love. The world keeps piling up bodies, gives you the knife, but in the bits of flesh grow fuchsia, grow fuchsia and wisteria, lilacs and tree moss. The touch of a lover holding you as you get yet another plane, cutting yourself on die-cut scraps of memories, shards of seeing that the world actually isn't you, push into the damage, Punch holes into the night's perfectly sinister blue. The sky wants to speak, but stammers. There are no dream lovers. There are barely dreams. Holy lands ablaze. Icons unworldly. Gazed, obscured with ash. Someone's utopia sacked a horde. You may think this therapy, but I would spit my blood in your eye. And then take kudzu, cottonwood, and sage, witch hazel, and make a tincture so you could see. Section 3. The temporary narcissism of recognition and the forging of my body. The ranging of the Coptic churches exploding near my Cairo apartment. A woman taking me in her mouth in Busan as I watch herons at the river shore, feathers white. The 84 Camaro windshield a nurse picked out of my trembling arm. A lover's blood on my white t-shirt. A knife wound puckering. Eating hash brownies on the edge of the Sahara. Running from rattlesnakes and switch glass. Touching the collapsing nostril of my grandfather's corpse to say goodbye. The crack of a cheekbone on my knuckle. Drunkenly singing madness in a taxi during Ramadan. The Smile wine under my stepfather's gray beard. The taste of fresh deer heart after field dressing the clean kill and the scrub brush. Watching two Mexican street dogs lap carnitas with wet tongues while I flirt with the waitress under the eyes of a crucifix. Wrapping my shirt around my cousin's melting arm as a gasoline fire burns hair until the filaments are nerves. Awakening between bodies gasping for warmth from clinging to the smell that some might confuse for love. A catalyst for dining... Dead is the final meal with those who leave, the sip of fresh tea with those who stay for just a few more seconds. Night terrors and the glacial thawing of truths that dig into my jawline, the gums abscessed into the deep tissue until a Korean doctor gives me a stick to save my tongue from a scalpel and my own teeth, the dead-eyed stare of a brother fished out of a creek, the the skin chilling as he sinks deeper into the cold. The lingering anus and lover's hair intertwined with a towel. Section 4. To the God who abhors lies, I have left these offsprings. But there is more for you to see. These body parts sundered and remixed in ethereal sands. My limp manhood against the leather sweats. Stripping away the belly fat to sate hungry ghosts. The demons who swipe right as you, har as you harrow hell, the bodily betrayals of cells dividing and dividing until even self is other, the desert sands abrade, the soul cataracts into polished glass, Wyoming winter freezes the red clay which birthed my body from semen, eggs, and star ash, the miraculous breathes into the particulate dust pulsing in my lungs near a slag mine, desire auto-cannibalizes, and the earth has given us all the ammo we needed. Strip away romance with the exhausted impact play. Prayers into bodies of others. Into the numb tongues of kisses turned to mantras. Section 5. If the world is fire, then I am flames. I walk to let myself go so I can see. For continents with loving cruelty tied my heart into clots of tight ribbon knots. But only a slice unravels it all. The grim ocean breathes as sand fleas litter our bodies, hoping pain drips into pure sensation. The pronouns melt away. The distance collapses into time. Implodes bodily mass. Seas and mirror silver. Sea polished crack. 
Finally, this is not about me, I, or even just you. The you whose name hollows my tongue. The you whose hand I held as it, you twitch bloody on a gurney in a foreign hospital. The you whose vomit I cleaned from my shoe after holding back your hair. The you who thought, who thought prepositions actually had meaning between two people. The you who felt my glacial thought echo in your perspective. The you who wrapped my gut wound with cotton gauze until my lip and smeared your nails. The you who slept between me and another one, New Year's. The you who pressed a lighter to my skin until the brand smelt of sick flesh. The you who thinks this is a love poem. The you who knows love poems aren't possible. The chorus of eyes now only start to see. To start to form mature questions, age like a thousand year eggs, shatters the dark glass and heavy bridle that kept us from full vision. Despite blood and bones, what do you really need? What solve can we be to each other after we are gone, beyond each veil and each reflection? They are encrusted in sea salt. Silent damage in the tremor of nervous time. I stand before you all, unblinking and naked, suturing myself, stitching each wound, myself with unsteady fingers. In silence there is light, there is bluster, there is undifferentiated space. There is I and thou. There is I. There remains thou. Can I see now? Can you see now? Can we see? That poem's a little heavy. And I will not... Uh, demean you by explaining it. I'll read one more for you from the new uh, book. Dated. This was a year where rushing hackers stole everything, including our will to live. Fire cell for, for heart-shaped boxes and personal ambitions on the deep web. Bitcoin only, please. So, much ado about phishing. Each passwords are gateways to the soul. In the light of the news, the past feels poorly lit puke green, and poetry feels less flippant, although the constant stretch for hipness winders the verses down to flip strings of broken bargain basement prose. So all the names have been changed to protect the guilty, and we laser etch the glass boys so their jawlines are defined, hiding the hairline cracks and jagged shards, cutting the air like sharks or like the pretense of jealousy. Not all I know are affected, not even with the clearest telescope could I see it. The glimmer of the future, the silver lining of the nebulae. Yes, everything is encrypted. Even your animal stupid nodding meat lump of a heart won't have its secrets uncoded for at least two decades of pure mathematics. Yes, we should mean goodbye when we say it. Yes, there are traces of arcness in the mold wine, of arsenic in the mold wine. Yes, the patrons have writ have written old rubber checks we can bounce the future along to. I hear echoes of acres in Siberia we can barter for. The Russians drift down current to the Bahamas from Vladivostok. New leases on life yet to be entirely repossessed. And, um, yay. Uh, the new book, it's called Liberation, All the Other Bread, etc. I'm going to do a podcast with one of the publishers, uh, with Terry Tapp soon, and I'll probably announce here and on my various social media when it comes out. Um, I'm going to leave this unedited so you can hear my stammers and my own poetry, um, and I hope you have a good day.